Welcome to Election Watch 2015. I'm your host, Teresa Whipple. In the studio, we have George Hurst. He is running for Linwood City Council, position six. George, welcome to the program. Thank you. Glad to be here. Love to have you talk about your background and why you're running for the council. Sure. Um, I've been a Linwood resident for almost 24 years. Um, and I, our four kids graduated from Linwood High School when it was in actually in Linwood. Mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs> I remember that high school. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> now it's a Costco. Right. Uh, and then um, over the years, uh, I've been involved in the community. Uh, my wife and I were, I guess, the, one of the charter organizers of National Night Out for our neighborhood. And um, I really felt a need to be a little more involved with the community. So we, my wife and I, again, we were part of a task force for transportation and traffic through the Public Works Department there a few years ago. And uh, just recently, I was appointed to the Linwood Planning Commission. Okay. And uh, really enjoy it. Haven't missed a meeting yet. It's, you know, I thought I'd get bored, but it, it's, it is pretty good. So. Well, that's a lot of work to be on the Planning Commission and on the Council. It, it would be, and so it, it, it'd be one or the other. So if I win okay. the, the I seat, see. then okay. I have Got to it. be replaced. Got you know? it. And so while on the Planning Commission, uh, it's advisory to the council, mm -hmm. and it got to the point where I thought, well, you know, it'd be really nice to make the final decisions. And so um, I've attended, I've been attending council meetings for probably the past year and a half, okay. and uh, thought that I had some good reasons to, to join the council. Okay. Very good, very good. Um, well, the first issue that we're going to ask about is um, uh, one that has come up uh, with the council a, a little bit, and that is the possibility of possibly um, a possible regional fire consolidation. Right. Um, that's something that um, some of the other cities in the area have done. Um, you know, have uh, had Fire District 1 absorb their fire departments, right. and Linwood, of course, has had its own fire department for many years. And um, I'm right. wondering if you've had a, enough of a chance to look at that issue and have some opinions about what that might hold for the city. I do. Um, it's not an easy uh, issue. It's complicated. Um, my concern would be whatever decision is made is best for the citizens. Um, you know, fire a, a district by its nature is a taxing district, and that's one of the concerns is how is this going to be, if we join Fire District 1, how is that going to be governed? Are the people of Linwood going to have a, a good voice? Uh, because uh, it's, it will be another taxing entity within our, our uh, city, and it will be something that the council will no longer have control over, really. Mm -hmm. It'll be up to Fire District 1. Um, it's it's complicated by the fact, just by the nature of how our state funds uh, cities. And right now, the state doesn't want to share many funds because of McCleary. They have to, uh, the education uh, initiative. They have to fund fully education. So there's not a lot of money to share there. And then with uh, the Iman uh, initiative, cities are limited on how much they can increase property taxes. And so... Um, I think if it, once a decision is made, it really has to be carefully looked at um, from both sides. I know I, I do get the feeling the firefighters union they in Linwood they kind of feel that the council has given them the short end over the years, and they're kind of uncertain about whether the city can can fund the fire department mm -hmm. fully, and so they have that concern. Um, I think it's a good uh, discussion to have. The city looked at this three or four years ago and decided not to do it. Mm -hmm. But maybe uh, if we can come to some sort of good governance uh, type of uh, conclusion, maybe it's something to look at. But again, it would have to be something that would be fair for the citizens. Yeah, okay, good. Um, and another issue that the council had considered um, was uh, putting a transportation ballot measure on the fall. Um, that would have included right. raising sales taxes and reducing vehicle tab fees, and they decided against that for this year. Right. Um, but they might look at it again later. So, and of course, this would fund things like street repairs and um, those kinds of uh, issues that have not right. been addressed in recent years. Um, what is your opinion about maybe looking at that later, or how are there other ideas you might have for addressing the the funding of streets? Yeah. Um, Using 
the sales tax as a tool, funding tool is, is really tough because we're almost at a tipping point where people just don't want to, we start increasing enough, we're going to have like a 10% sales tax. And I, I think people will really will push back on that. And I know that um, uh, community transit and uh, the regional transit authority, they are starting to, they're thinking of uh, raising the sales tax. Mm -hmm. And I think they're going to have a, a tough go of it too. I would prefer um, some other funding method. Um, I know the tabs aren't aren't the most popular, but maybe um, we might even have to look at uh, a levy lift type of of uh, proposal just to get the funding back. Because um, when I served on that task force for traffic, and then um, in discussions with Public Works, and and they've made presentations to the Planning Commission too, they need about two million dollars a year just to maintain the roads so that we don't have to spend more money on rebuilding roads if we can just do over you know overlay and go with a cheaper route um, then that's obviously cheaper for the city but if you look at 36th which is the famous road that's now going to be rebuilt it really has to be rebuilt from the ground up because no ma no maintenance was done on it mm -hmm. and so it's really important to to get those maintenance funds somehow back into the budget and you know it needs to be a priority rather than just a, a second thought because I know in this current budget there's um, let's see if I remember the figure there's enough money in there to do an overlay for a third of a mile and that's all yeah. and that just you know that's that doesn't work in our city so we really do have to reconsider it yeah okay um, another topic that uh, has come up in recent months has been um, retail marijuana businesses mm -hmm. in the city and the council right. voted to um, put a ban on those businesses yep. within the city limits. Um, is that something that you think maybe should re be reviewed at some point and if it were do you have any opinion on whether it should be lifted or maintained? Sure. Um, in the Planning Commission we've had two public hearings on recreational marijuana and um, again, that is, that is a complicated issue because the feds, the federal government still considered it a uh, felony to, mm -hmm. to possess marijuana. And that just makes it tough to be able to uh, figure out, well, um, how, do, how do we handle that? Um, I don't know. As an experiment, I actually visited a retail marijuana shop mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago just to talk to the, to the manager there. And the challenges he has is that um, he's faced with a lot of excise tax that is added on. Uh, the state has just finally figured out that, uh, well, maybe the medical marijuana needs to be regulated, and before it hasn't been. And it, I think starting July of uh, 2016, finally, that's going to have to be regulated. And he was telling me how, you know, across the street from his his store, there's a medical marijuana un, unlicensed place. He sees people drive up and open their trunk and they're selling marijuana out of their trunk. Mm -hmm. And he's faced with a highly regulated system where he was telling me that, that this, the marijuana that he sells in his shop, he can tell from what seed it was grown and where it was grown. Mm -hmm. And so he's not, he told me he's not making any money. Mm -hmm. and. Um, he has to be still handling sales by cash because, again, it's a federal, banks are federally regulated and they're scared that the feds may come down on them if they accept money from the marijuana business because to the feds, that's, that's drug business and they could, the banks could suffer. So it really needs to be cleared up federally and then, um, again, the state has finally figured out that uh, we, yeah, we need to license the, the mar medical marijuana. And maybe we can look at it. But the, one of the points that I really I brought up to the council and to the planning commission is the 24-7 um, the grow, indoor growing operations. They are energy hogs. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, the Lawrence Berkeley Lab, one of their scientists did a study. And for a kilogram of marijuana, it takes 3,000 kilograms of CO2, of carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. And 
we're in a we're a state that prides himself of being a sustainable state. Our governor wants to put a tax on um, CO2 emissions, mm -hmm. and really the vision, the statement of Linwood says that we need to support businesses who are sustainable. And for me, an indoor growing operation just doesn't do it. And so, I voted no both times in the planning commission just based on that, um, and the fact that at the time the recreational marijuana regulations were messed up by the state. But, you know, I, I think in time, 55 percent of the people in Linwood voted for that initiative. And um, it's a possibility that we could have some shops in there. But I would uh, definitely, the indoor growing operations, I would stop from getting into Linwood. Okay. Okay. Uh, another kind of thing I've heard for a while since I've been doing these interviews is, you know, that, that uh, Linwood is a city that is too reliant on sales tax for its yeah. revenues, speaking of what right. we were talking about earlier. Right. Is that something that you agree or disagree with, and would you support diversifying the city's revenue sources, and if so, what might those be? Right. Well, that's a challenge, uh, mm -hmm. and it is correct. Uh, Linwood is dependent on retail sales tax, I think. Um, five, the last figures I looked at, um, the, in 2014, the city got $19 million in retail sales tax. The other revenue is about $50 million. So really, if you, in general figures, it's almost 40% of the revenue that Linwood gets. And there are other avenues of, of revenue. In fact, our city council, uh, in the last budget, they, they, they raised fees and taxes on, on six different levels and kind of maxed out where we can go with those taxes. And so I think that um, I kind of like uh, the fact that maybe we should uh, almost embrace our sales tax and say, you know what, we've got a great mall, we do have um, great uh, retail businesses in Linwood, and if we can bring in people and have them shop Linwood, Okay, that's good, but uh, there are dangers. I mean, like the last recession, it re boy, that really hit the sales mm -hmm. tax, and then we really had to do some cuts in the in the city budget. But you know, I think we do have other avenues of revenue, but it's still going to be the sales tax that's going to be mm -hmm. number one for Linwood. Mm -hmm. Okay. The city's ethnic and immigrant populations continue to increase, and what are mm -hmm. ways that the city can involve those residents in government and provide services to them? Okay. Um, first of all, I would love our police department to uh, put on a real initiative to hire uh, minorities. We have a very low uh, percentage of minority officers. Mm -hmm. um, and that we do, the city has one great, great thing going for it is that we have a diversity commission, mm -hmm. and um, they have put out some really good programs. Um, we had a Black History Month uh, program. We had, uh, uh, let's see, there was uh, a Holocaust uh, mm -hmm. uh, meeting one in April, and I think we could use that commission a lot more in in um, getting events together. I know the citizens way back, one well, the way back, in 2014, there was a meeting of, of citizens to talk about priorities. And, and one of the major priorities was that people wanted a sense of community in Linwood. And I think that if we had more community events, uh, it would draw more people together. We could celebrate diversity. We could also, just as citizens of Linwood, have celebrations and, and see, hey, we're, you know, this is a pretty good place to live. And, I think uh, that would be a good avenue to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here's another hot, hot button issue that doesn't seem to be as hot as it used to be in past years, but that's the red light cameras. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, is this an issue that the city council should take another look at, or has it just kind of gone underneath the radar a little bit, so to speak? Maybe that was a bad use of terms. Yeah. <laughs> really. <laughs> No, I, you know, I think in for the citizens of Linwood, we've gotten kind of used to them, uh -huh. but we've got friends uh, outside the city, and they say, "I will never shop," you know, at the I've mall. I've heard that more than once yeah, from people because of the red light cameras, yeah. and um, and we have kind of surrounded the mall with red light cameras, mm -hmm. 
And in one of the Planning Commission uh, meetings that I attended, they were talking about the public works people. They assess intersections, and they even give them grades, A, B, C, D, E, and F. And I don't think we have any inter intersection above a D. But uh, I asked them, uh, well, how, do you, how did the city decide where to put red light cameras? And I was surprised to find out they didn't decide. It was the company in Arizona uh -huh. that puts, you know, that we lease the red light cameras from. They decided where to put the intersection or put the red lights at the intersection. And my thought is that um, I know we've done a lot of studies of intersections. Maybe could we see if the red light cameras have actually reduced the accidents? Because that was the main thing. Um, when they first were put in, it was going to be for safety, mm -hmm. and, I, and my thought is, you know, if it, if they do did reduce uh, the accidents, why can't we put a little sign out there at the red light camera say, "This camera reduced accidents at this intersection by 20 percent." Mm -hmm. You know, if they don't redu haven't reduced accidents, I think maybe we should uh, reconsider just. Because you know the revenues have have dropped. Some it used to be two million dollars, you know, of revenue per mm -hmm. year that we got from the cameras. It's it's getting lower because people are getting smarter as far yeah. as knowing where they are. And I just think that okay, well maybe we should uh, study this a little more. Okay. All right. Now is the opportunity for you to directly address the voters um, okay. and let them know why they should uh, vote for you. So feel free to do that now. All right. Great. Um, I'm George Hurst, running for uh, City Council position six. And I think that in the next few years, uh, it's going to be crucial for the future of Linwood. There's a lot of growth going on, not only the Costco, but by 2016, we're going to have four multi-story, multi-family projects completed in 2016. So the City Council really needs to consider how are we going to be able to maintain police and fire level of service? How are, we, how are we going to maintain our infrastructure within this city? And to me, um, right now, the, the council hasn't made wise decisions on that. And um, I just think that right now it's time to reset the council again. And I would like uh, your vote so that I could be part of that council to make uh, decisions for a better Linwood. Thank you. George, thank you so much for coming on the program, and I wish you the best in your campaign. Great. Thank you very much for having me.